All right, this week on Camera Talk, we're talking about natural light. Anheuser Busch Natural Light. Brewed naturally with nothing artificial to give you a crisp, refreshing beer that won't fill you up so it won't slow you down. That's right. I'm not a strobe or a flash user. Oh, well, I know there's plenty of you out there that are, but I use natural light. I use whatever ambient light I have here. Uh, so anyway, let's talk about that. There's different ways to use natural light. So Dylan and I are going to go through a few of them for you and uh, hopefully help distinguish the differences for it. So grab yourself something to eat or drink. Get comfortable, right? Are you comfortable, mister? Eh, fix your shirt. All right, so let's get it on. Here I am. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and Dylan. That's right, Camera Talk with Dr. Scott, our uh, continuing co-host here, Mr. Dylan, always ready, willing to do a new video. Well, this week we're not going to uh, talk about any lenses, any vintage lenses or cameras or systems or anything like that. I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? Hold on a sec. There we go. It's good to be the king. You got it all up? You know, camera talk again is, uh, you know, been based on, you know, vintage lenses and economical things throughout our series of videos here. Um, and that's not to go without saying today's video is uh, kind of following along in those lines anyway, right? We're talking about the use of natural light. How economical is that? You know, cheap bastard. Besides, you know, I spend a little too much time out there and you'll end up with a sunburn or skin cancer or who knows what other kinds of evil things the sun can do to you. But, and I do mean, but. Like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. Natural light is excellent for photography. But there's different ways to use it, right? No, no, too soon, buddy. We're not talking about that yet. Um, I'm just going to cover three kind of basics uh, using natural light. And, um, you know, the first and foremost, you know, when you're doing any kind of uh, interior uh, photography, you know, portraiture and whatnot, we have windows, right? That's taken for granted. Most of us have windows. I've seen some apartments in other places that have no windows whatsoever. Kind of creepy, really gloomy. Uh, besides other things like prison cells or anything. But I wouldn't know anything about that. But window light. Window light is excellent because, you know, it's a natural, it's a natural filter. Um, for the light that's coming in because it's not a direct light unless your sun's setting or rising in that particular direction of the window but generally it's it's coming from a different angle so it's already softened a wee bit but if you use like shears which are i am running with scissors for those who don't know the names of window coverings you have shears and drapes and curtains um and all kinds of other things, but the one I'm talking about today, shears are the ones that you can see through. So even though they're closed, that you can see through them, they're like looking through, looking, looking through very thin toilet paper kind of thing. Ew! I don't know why, however best to describe that, right? Um, so that in itself is another filter on top of that. It's like a, uh, like a scrim, um, you know, fil it softens, really softens the, the light out there. And of course a cloudy day, softens it even further. But still, using a window is a, a great way to light the scene uh, for free. And ideally, if you're going to use it for portraiture, um, situating your, your subject on a 45 degree angle allows for the light to hit one side and kind of wrap around the face to the other side. So it provides a bit of a shadow on this side as well. Um, now, of course, Everything depends on everything, but if you have something 
here, like if it's another wall or something in the corner, it's going to reflect that light right back onto the face again. But I'm talking in an open room, you know, if you're subject to this without anything reflecting on this side. Hold on, hold on. Somebody skipped their nap today, didn't they? It was his uh, first week of uh, preschool this week. Only cried like a little girl. For the first couple days after that, now he seems to go to school and he's okay. He had his first nap today. Not very long though. The teacher said he skipped over uh, like a good hour of it or so. So he only napped for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But um, so he's going to be a sleepy guy this afternoon, I must say. Anyhow, um, you know, window light again, excellent. Wraps around the face. It's very good for uh, a number of things, but also with the window, it allows you to control the amount of light coming through. Again, the shears are one thing, you know, uh, you know, they're like putting a soft box over, uh, over a flash or a strobe. But if you use curtains or drapes, you know, the real heavy stuff that you, the, you can't see through and the, the light cannot get through. If you close them to whatever amount of light you want to allow, allow in, it's almost like the, uh, like the aperture on a, on a lens. You know, you close the drapes further and further shut and you'll see uh, less and less light coming in, creating softer light or directional light or things, uh, you know, like a, <laughs> like a, um, a Rembrandt lighting type situation. And I'll show you some examples of that here. And that was, you know, the little family thing we had going on in the living room. Troop just closed, closed the uh, curtains and, and away we go. Um, that was a while ago, as you can see, I no longer have that goatee and he's several months older than that, but still is a good example of using uh, the window light to make those, make those photos. So that's window light, you know, again, you can use it in a doorway, you know, um, and, you know, it depends on the size of the window too. You may only have a, a small little bathroom window or whatnot. It still, you know, can be used in various ways for various different results. The next one I want to talk about is light coming from behind or a backlit situation. So if the sun is behind um, the subject, you are going to get, you know, again, light wrapping around the head this way. So you're going to get uh, almost like rim light in the background uh, where you'll see the, you'll see like a halo effect around, uh, around your subject. Um, and it, and it, it's great to, you know, provide that, uh, that element of separation. It's like the 3d pop kind of thing. So, um, backlit lighting is, is great as well. Uh, and you can even do that with the window lighting, but you know, the best way that backlit lighting is going to work for you is probably going to be um, during the golden hour, you know, which is later in the day or early in the morning, whichever way, sunrise, sunset. So the sun's not glaringly bright, but it's, it's bright enough to highlight the subject, but not blow out the, the scene behind. Now you can also get backlit situations from reflections off of buildings or, you know, if you're in a little alleyway, things like this, um, you can use that, that same, uh, backlit uh, situation for natural light. Um, and the last little element I want to add about natural light is, um, again, to get that, get that element of, uh, uh, of background or, or contrast um, in, your, in your scene or on your, on your subject. You know, if we were, let's say this, this wall behind me here, I had Dylan situated behind it and the light was coming from this way the light would also be reflecting off the wall back onto his face again. So it'd be lighting the entire face, which kind of flattens the scene, you know, uh, again, there's no contrast. There's no, no sense of, uh, again, that 3d, 3d element. So you could put a reflector, you know, the, they make the, ref the circular or rectangular reflectors that reflect white, silver, or gold or black. 
you know, they usually have a combination there of, uh, so you'd use the black one so that it actually does not allow for the light reflection. It, it darkens the one side of the face. Um, now of course you're not hiding anything, are you? You don't like to hide anything. So, um, yeah, so a dark side, the dark side. Uh, I'll show you the dark side. I, again, something that's going to add uh, the sense of creativity and whatnot to uh, to shadow, add some shadow to that uh, uh, one side of the face. So, it, yeah, I mean, we've all seen, you know, photos out there where somebody's face is fully illuminated. Um, it's okay. Nothing very exciting, though. Um, it's not doesn't catch your eye and really get you uh, that element of looking into the uh, into the portrait so um, let's show you some uh, some samples of each one of these so here's Dylan uh, with some window light right some window light uh, portraiture Are you ready for that mister all right right here And uh, let's see, Dylan with some backlit, right? Yes, show with the, the light coming from behind to show that uh, the rim light look, of the 3D pop, the contrast. So here's Dylan with some backlight. And how about some dark side? You want, to, you want to do some dark side, mister? Have you been to the dark side? Do you know what the dark side is? The dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Pretend you don't know what I'm saying to you. Okay, well, let's see Dylan with the dark side. And how about some random stuff showing, you know, obviously other things other than things other than Dylan, um, just to show you how natural light can be used by other better photographers than me and uh, how the effects can really make a difference using natural light for those who are like me and don't even own a flash or a strobe or anything else. I want to lug around all this equipment everywhere. I just want to bring my camera, me and my camera, me and my subject, and we go out and we take pictures. So here's some random stuff, window light, backlit, and using the dark side. Okay, well that was uh, that was it for this week's uh, this week's episode. Um, so, if anybody uh, has any other ways to use natural light, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and uh, and we'll uh, share those with the rest of the world, or at least the rest of our audience here, anyway. So, how about we do our little plug for Luminar, our software that we use to edit our photos. So Luminar, Luminar AI, Luminar Neo are, um, again, the, the two bits of software that I own um, from a company named Skylum, who's uh, operating and, and developing out of uh, Ukraine. 
and um, everybody knows what's going on there. So hope you guys can support them, you know, because they're actually re releasing new upgrades and everything else while Putin is pooping all over their country. So good for them. Uh, so you have my support. So if you would, uh, you know, like or have a, a need for some photo editing software, why don't you support Skylum as well and get some Luminar for yourself? They're, it's only like $70 or so. Um, and if you click below, click below, you'll save $10 uh, on the link below. And out of that $10, we get a little kickback too, right? Yay, kickback! One million dollars. Um, so why not help us out? So anyway, um, that is that. And what else? How about you subscribe? Uh-huh. Support our channel. Oh. oh, wait, hold on. Woo, we had a wardrobe malfunction. The end of this song. Our, uh, our makeshift softbox over our, uh, our lighting just decided to take a shit and jump all over the floor. So, what did we just say? How about, besides the word shit, how about subscribe? That's right. And the double-handed one. Subscribe! And support our channel, right? We need all the support we can get because we need to be exposed to the world. Oh, okay. What else does YouTube like? Yeah, thumbs up, except your thumbs aren't up, mister. Thumbs up. Dee 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 dee. All right. So that's the thumbs up, girls. And I think that was pretty much all we wanted to talk about this week, yeah? So, um, you know, who are we? Well, besides Dr. Scott and Dylan. We are, the name of the channel is Modesty Photography, and we're here to talk about tips and tricks about photography, which one was today. We talk about vintage lenses, to which I got a hundred or so behind me. Uh, camera systems from, from Leicas to Sonys to Canons to GoPros to Rolly Cords to Yashikas and, and uh, what's the other one I have? Forgot what, what else I've got up there got too many to think of. I don't even use them all. What the heck do I have them for, right? So anyway, uh, that's Modesty Photography. And uh, remember, we're here for you because you belong here. And where do they belong, mister? What's the name of this show? This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and Dylan. That's right. So come on back next week. Let's do this all again. Uh, we'll get back into talking about some, some lenses, vintage lenses, uh, or maybe not so much vintage lenses, maybe uh, some more modern stuff, but it's still relatively economical, except for my Leica stuff. But hey, we go outside, we play outside of the box every now and then, don't we? Yeah. Sometimes we talk about expensive stuff. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, and that's just the way it goes. So anyway, you have a nice day. Have a nice week. And thanks for dropping by. Speaking of bye, you gonna say bye bye? <gasps> bye bye. Here I am, Vietnam. Rain is always coming.